I'm a big like show off. Like and the minute you sell all of your art, what are you going to show off? I need to have my art so I can... If my wife dies and I'm dating again, I can bring women into my art gallery and say, Hey, look at all the nice stuff I made. And she'll be like, Ooh, I'm, I'm so turned on by this. You're so talented. Um, supposing my wife didn't die, well, I can do that with friends, minus the turned on part. I can show friends or family, like, hey, or my kids, or my kids' friends. Whatever it is, the point is, whenever I have guests to my house, I can show them my stuff, because I'm insecure and I like to be complimented on how talented I am. And that will stroke my ego, and it's always fun to have your ego stroked and feel important and feel, um, impressive to others. So for that reason, I wouldn't want to sell my art. Now, if I produced such a huge volume of art every year that I could keep all my favorite pieces and sell the well, crap, that's, that's a different story. But I don't produce that much art, and none of my art will be crap because I am very meticulous, and I don't take mediocre results for um, a successful, satisfying conclusion to a project. The only results I accept are absolute... Excellence. And so, all of my art would be so good, and I'd be so proud of it, that I wouldn't want to get rid of it. And I regret how much of my art I have already thrown away or given away in my lifetime. I don't have anything. Like, all the sculptures I made during my college days, they're all gone. That's kind of why I want to make small-scale sculptures, so it's more practical to keep them. If you make a big sculpture, where are you going to put that? In your garage? In your attic? Like, where's the room for a big sculpture in your life? So all sculptures I do from now on have to be small and lightweight, so I can just stick them on a shelf. It takes away the grandiosity of them, however... You're trying not to show up. I mean, who has the room for some gigantic sculpture? Oh. So that's why I'm making mini sculptures from now on. The only bad thing about a mini sculpture is you'll never be able to sell it for a million dollars because it's so small and nobody cares. People spend the big money on a giant sculpture. But that's that's just a price you got to pay if you want to keep your sculptures. I mean... You can't fit a bunch of giant sculptures in your house unless if you live in a huge mansion with a whole gymnasium for your well, your art to be stored in. I'm used to seeing them done more because you always get from a pa from a practical home. perspective. Keeping your art means the art has to be small. That's the bottom line. Sad as that is. Hey, I got an idea. If I want to sell my art on eBay, but I, but it's too sentimental to me, so I actually don't want to sell it, because because it, it means a lot to me to keep it. I can just list it for sale at a really high price, such a high price that it would be life changing if it sold at that price. I'm not saying oh like hundred million, but let's say. 200,000 like like that would be s such a ridiculously large amount of money that if somebody were willing to pay that then you know what let's do it let's do this so uh, I can name some really really big prices maybe less than that I don't know but the point is like huge amounts of money so that it really doesn't sell but then it could like there's that tiny 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 chance that it could and if it did then the story around that would be so cool like, man, somebody spent 100000 on my art. That's awesome. That it'd be worth getting rid of it like, for the story. Um, meanwhile, everybody can see it who browses eBay. And they'd be like, oh, that's a cool painting. Or that's a cool sculpture. I wish I could have that, but it's too much. And maybe um, some people could comment on it in, in the comments on the listing. Over the years, somebody might comment, like, this is cool. Could you lower the price maybe? And I'd be like, nope. So that's a cool compromise for art I really don't want to part with, but I kind of would. Businessmen don't get attached, but I don't want art to be my business. It's a hobby, and so I can get attached. Now, if art were my 
principal source of income or were ever intended to be such, that's a different story. I'd need to not get attached and I need to sell it. But because I'm not planning to have that be an even minimal part of my income at all, then it's perfectly fine for me to be attached to it because that's my own property and it's not something I did for commercial gain. But like I said, if somebody were willing to pay a, a ridiculously large amount of money, then you know what? I would do it. I mean, it's got to be an, an amount that would make me feel amazing. Like if I made a painting, I mean, I might, I might put it up for sale for um, seventy thousand or seventy-five thousand, and some rich person might actually buy it. Who knows? But you know what? I don't want to do list it for five hundred. Like th that's not even worth it. Yeah, it might pay me five bucks an hour for my time, but if I'm trying to make a masterpiece, five bucks an hour ain't gonna cut it. So I'd rather keep a masterpiece to enjoy and show off to my friends. It'd be more valuable to me than that five bucks an hour in my own collection. Besides, if I ever become a multi-millionaire someday and I'm tel telling people about the art I used to make when I was younger, they'd be like, well, let's see it. And I'd say, oh, I sold it all. And they'd be like, oh. And I'd, be, I'd regret it because I think someday I will be a millionaire. And that five bucks an hour people paid me to part me from all of my art so I can never show anybody the cool stuff I've made, that would be like, something that really bothered me. I'd be like, man, why'd I get rid of all that amazing art I spent a lot of time on? I'd love to show my grandkids this, but I, I needed the money at that time and I got rid of it. No. I'd rather not go through that. And some people, when they get really rich later on in life, try to buy back their old art that they sold. I won't need good luck. And the people they try to buy it back from, knowing they're rich Master now, everything. will try to charge you a million to get your own art back that they've spent... 500 for so it's like you might as well just keep it then oh. if it's going to come down to that at the end so that's basically it I, i'd sell my art but it's going to be at least tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of dollars per piece now i'd sell like little stuff like drawings and stuff for less if if they only took a few days but if I'm selling art you know that took me years to make In fact, forget about it man <laughs> I'm charging tens of thousands I the spite that I had before. besides if I made some awesome art All this crazy I don't stuff want it on the wall of somebody who only wanted stuff. to pay 200 I, mean, a lot of crazy stuff I don't want it in their too. crappy house in the but suburbs I can't all do it I if I make a masterpiece I want it to be in a museum or in a mansion next to a Picasso. If you're selling your art for 200 or 300,000 bucks a pop, it may very well be next to a famous person's art. It may very well be in the same house of somebody that owns a Picasso painting. And that's the kind of painting I want mine to be next to. The price you charge for your art will directly impact the other art that's going to be sitting next to it someday. I want my art to sit next to the best art. And what a better way to be discovered. So let's say... I sell my art for 600 bucks. It ends up in some, you know, lawyer's house in his art room who lives in, in a $400,000 house in the suburbs or a doctor or whatever. All right. But if I sell it for 200000 it's going to be in an actual art collector's house. And it's going to be in a mansion. And it's going to be next to famous pieces of art that he may have spent 800000 for, a million for, two million for. A true art lover that's also a wealthy person. And when he has an exhibit in his mansion or has wealthy friends come over, they will see his art 
and they'll recognize famous pieces and they'll also recognize your piece which is next to these famous pieces and they'll say oh i haven't heard of this artist this is really nice who is this and he'll be like oh this is uh larry and um they'll be like wow so i gotta google search this larry guy he's a heck of an artist and they'll they'll already be thinking in their head like larry's on the same level as picasso and so it kind of like will cause me to be discovered by famous people and by the artistic community at a high level and if that doesn't happen my stuff never ends up selling for those prices then that's fine it the sentimental value will make up for it but so it's either all or nothing in other words in that case Yes, I want somebody to say, here's my Van Gogh, here's my Picasso, but my best piece is my art by robot. That's what I need to hear. That will make me feel very satisfied as an individual. That would be very satisfying. Yes, smiling. That's exactly what I want to hear the collectors say. I want them all to throw all their famous pieces in the garbage because mine are way too good. And by comparison, the famous pieces suck. I didn't. I never opened up the battery itself. That's when you know you're doing well as an artist, when that happens. Of its output wiring come out of it. And that doesn't impact... That's my goal. Otherwise, why even pick up a paintbrush? If that's not your goal, then you might as well not be an artist. Or in a thousand years, they'll be saying, Man, Arpa Robot was the best artist of all time. At, at the time he was alive, people praised the works of people like Van Gogh and Picasso, um, who you may never have heard of because they're no longer famous. All their paintings got thrown away. But Art by Robot's paintings have lasted the test of time. He's one of the only artists whose work are valued a thousand years later. Oh, snaps! That's what I want to hear. They're going to make protective glass for my paintings that's eight feet thick. A whole country can be exploded by an atomic bomb, but my paintings will be the last thing standing because that's how thick the protective glass is. Can you imagine running around your house naked screaming, I sold my painting for $200,000. That's what I want to feel when I get a sale, not, oh man, there goes another one of my paintings I'll never get to show my grandkids. I want it to be a huge amount of money that's actually thrilling. Otherwise, I'm more than happy to keep it. You never know. Someday, if some wealthy person who $200,000 is no, nothing to them will actually pay that. You never know. Somebody could easily just decide, YOLO, I'm going to buy this guy's painting. I like it. And they'll automatically assume it's a famous person's painting, maybe, if they saw a $200,000 painting on eBay. They might be curating art for a gallery and not know that I'm not a famous painter. And they'll be like, $200,000, that's about the budget I'm looking to spend for a painting. And I like this painting, so I'm going to buy this one. They won't know that that was not a smart move or whatever because I'm not actually a known painter. They'll just go based on how much they like the painting and the, the amount of money that they were looking to pay for a painting. I mean, all paintings are subject subjective in price anyways. It's, it's all about what people are willing to pay for them. You never know who's willing to pay a lot of money for painting they like regardless of what the fame collectively that painter has garnered from the overarching artistic community and how well known his name is some people might just say i want to spend about a half a million and buy three or four pieces and this piece i like and it's about in the budget i want to spend i mean it's that simple you never know when you might land a whale but practically on accident out of nowhere it could happen so that's why I'm going to set the bar high on my pricing. <laughs> it's 
If it doesn't sell, I win. And if it sells, I really win. It's a win-win.